Hi, welcome. We are going to install Arch Linux on a virtual box. Just to make it clear to you guys again, it doesn't matter what number is behind here. This is an SSD that I've installed with the ISO of November and it's all up to specs. All you need to do is read the articles about updating. A few commands to know and um, then you're actually up to date. This is just what's inside a particular file in your system, etc slash LSB release. You can change it to anything you like. That's not important. With a Super F7, I'm gonna launch up my virtual box. This is the SSD that I use to teach Arch Linux. And we have two possibilities to install Arch Linux. You can have either an older motherboard, which is going to use BIOS, or a newer one, which is probably going to use UFI. So I have these different virtual boxes and in this website, let's have a look at it. If you go to Arco Linux D, we have this learning phases in um, Arco Linux learning path. And one of the things that we do is we encourage you to learn about Arch Linux because Arco Linux is based on Arch Linux. At some point in time, you might consider to install Arch Linux the Arch way. So, and then we have got the installation procedure into parts. So there is this phase one, if you're on an older motherboard, phase one, if you're on a newer motherboard, and then you go to phase two, phase three, and phase four is actually choose something to work on. So that's your workflow choice. What desktop do you like to work on? And we're missing here Qtile. So that's the idea is to make a all in one. This is an all in one. What does that mean? It means I start from scratch. I go to the phases, phase one, two, three, and then four is the one that interests us. That's installation of Qtile itself. So these three have already been created and that's then you end up with a cinnamon or an Xmonad or a Mate. So it's all what you like to see. It's all cut into pieces. Everything in here is cut into pieces as well, but some of them have been, well, well, I used the one, two, three, four phases in one video or several videos, but basically the end result is the same, all right? You have to go to the motions anyway, all phases to get to the end result. So that's the idea. It's missing here a Qtile version. And for me, well, it um, pays off to sometimes go and check to the pages again, if it's still okay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, well, you've seen the virtual box. Let's open it again. You've seen there's a lot of bias stuff in here. So let's make this time a UFI guy here. So a new one from, from scratch. I could actually reuse this one and just clone it and go on to phase four. But let's make a new version and see if everything works. So this is um, a bit difficult, more difficult in the sense that UFI is, uh, well, they used to say that it was still beta back in, uh, let's say six or seven months ago. So there is in the meantime already a new virtual box out. Uh, so. Let's try it out. There are, are some things you need to know. There's a solution at the bottom of the page. There's a workaround. So it's not, if you're on SSD, then you don't need to do all these fixes for VirtualBox, but in this case we do. Okay. Um, what else, what is the, the other thing I'm gonna do? I'm gonna type arch wiki, oops, installation. Oh my God, let me get rid of that and done. So we have the installation guide. This is what you should do. I think it's this one. Let's me, let's be sure. Wiki installation guide, this should be it. Yeah. So this document is a guide for installing Arch Linux on the live system, system booted with the official installation image. I have already downloaded it, the ISO. It's super easy, go to downloads. And then, well, either use the torrent up here or just use the, the country that's closest to you, or your own country maybe. 
doesn't mean it's the fastest, by the way. But here are lots of uh, lists to get the same ISO I got. And then the story starts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this guy over here like this. I'm gonna do that on the other screen, of course. But let's just show what I'm gonna be looking at like this. So this is my guide and I'm following my guide, of course. And then we're gonna check in the meantime, I'll be checking what it says down here. If anything changes or has changed, then we can update it. If not, everything stays the same. So this is what I'm gonna do on the other screen. So I'm moving everything over to the other screen like so. So a UFI, that's what we're gonna do. So we, let's make a new one. Mm, yeah, let's make a new one. That's more education. So let's do an, uh, let's see how I named those guys. Template UFI, okay. So a new one, UFI templates. All right, Microsoft Windows, Linux, Oracle, no, Arch, Linux, 64 bits, next. I have 16 to give away, I'll give eight to the guest and the host, and create a hard disk, next, dynamically, and eight is not enough. 20 is probably enough already, but I'm gonna take 30 or 25, it's okay create not finished go to the settings right mouse click and have a look so advanced no enable UFI so this is a specific tutorial about UEFI or extended firmware interface which is required to boot certain guest OS's non EFI aware OS will not be able to boot if this option is activated Arch Linux can keep track of EFI, so fine. One, two, three, four, 50, 50, four cor um, cores for the guest and the host. We're gonna enable this guy, otherwise INC won't show us anything really. Acceleration is good, display is wrong. Put it to VBox VGA. Not sure if this does anything, but I'm always clicking on it and more or less 50, 50 for the video memory and all the rest stays the way it is. Okay. Then we need to actually load it up, the optical drive, but first, before I do that, so let's close this one. Mm -hmm. He's, uh, I'm thinking of uh, a new group. Well, a new group, right mouse click, rename group. This is the new UFI. So this guy is going to be my template. So I'm gonna clone this already. Doesn't take a lot of space. It's just a configuration really. And I'm gonna call it Arch Linux for April, meaning I do believe they call it 1904 or something like that. Control H. Downloads 2019.03. Okay, bye. I need to get the 04 version. So 19.04. Next, clone. And we're ready, but I forgot to type the phases. So this is gonna be phase one. So I need to download my ISO so I can show you. Download in a new tab. And I found out that one of the fastest is Germany, leaseweb.net. And this is the correct, that's the one I need. These days, this uh, Google Chrome or Chromium, actually, this is not Google Chrome, this Chromium, is giving us a hard time to read it, but it's still okay. So it's already downloaded. Bye. All right, optical drive, choose disk image. This is the new one. 
2019-04-01. Double click, moving to the correct window. And this, it's gone already. If you see a logo, then you're in, putting in bias. If you see these lines that you just saw, then you know that you're in UFI. So you actually don't need to test anything really, because when you boot up, you already know with a, a, a logo from ArchLinux, you know, I'm bias, bias, right? Or Dutch bias, right? But in, um, and you see these, these lines like you just saw, then you know it's UFI. It's gonna take a while. Like in the past, it's still taking a while. Even though we have a new Arch Linux and a new virtual box, we'll see how it uh, behaves. In the meantime, I'm reading what I have to do. Boot from USB, disable secure boot, disable launch CSM. That's all advice for your SSD or your actual uh, hardware installation, not the virtual box installation. Enable USB boot, set USB do disk as boot priority. There are tutorials on articlinks.com just about this bias thing or this, this boot thing, how to uh, make sure that everything just works on real hardware. Okay, so this is what we see on the page. Let me show you again. So this is an image, Arch Linux 4.15. In the meantime, we're in 505, but basically yeah, those screenshots will guide you through the installation. Pre-installation, set the keyboard layout. So load keys, I need to load my keys. As you see, this is a QWERTY thing. So I have to watch out what I type. So load keys, PE dash Latin one. That's the one I need and I have my Azerti back. So that's the first thing you need to look up and there are tutorials on uh, the website here, ArcLinks D, some links where you can find, find out the, con the keyboard configuration in your console. So you check that out. I've done that. Verify the boot mode, not necessary since we know, we saw it's UFI, so that's okay. Connecting the internet is not necessary, but if you really want to connect or test, ping something you know, a company you know, or anything. Oh God, this is my internet service provider. Checked, I have internet. And um, mm -hmm. then we go on, we go on. And the next thing we have to do is update the system clock. So. In the meantime, let me scroll also on the Arch Wiki. And the Arch Wiki is saying, check out. So connect to the internet, make sure that you can ping. And we are here, update the system clock. And before that we had this keyboard layout. So if, if, you, if you don't know the name for a German keyboard, you should do this and then so on. You can check out here what choice you have to make. So DE Latin one instead of BE Latin one and so on. We are here. So I'm following along in the same time. I'm reading two pages. Maybe a good idea to do as well. If you're stuck, you have an, a solution to well get unstuck basically. <laughs> time, date, CTL, set, NTP, is true. Done that. Been there, done that. That's how the expression, I believe. And then the partitioning of the disk starts already. And indeed, it starts here as well. And they talk about Linux and Linux swap. They do talk about the different choices. So you have BIOS with MBR and by a UFI with GPT. And they talk about the boot and about EFI or the mount, different partitions and swap. At least this, more than that. And we format everything, mount it, and we're going to install it. Okay. So back to my tutorial. We should maybe give you a, a tip as well. We, this is a clean system, a super clean system. It's never been touched, never been formatted. But in real life, 
it's probably already been been um, formatted maybe as a windows partition or as, as something else really so if you really want to have a clean slate then there are two commands in here that you should know in the article i mean in here so there is this wipe thing wipe the file system and which file system device sda is uh, sorry device as the a is something you can type there's also sg disk minus z i think it was um, it was a funny word this snap thing as the a so mon sg disk was zap i think is something on the back zap zap all this big z is zap all so everything is clean that's the point no there is no um yes i want have meant clear there is no partition there is no formatting there is nothing there's everything is super super clean so if you have this issue that's a good a good tip really so scrolling back up in my page we will use a minimal partition for the efi first off we start CF disk, that's what I say. And since it's clean, 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 it actually doesn't know am I a DOS or am I GPT, so an MVR or UFI. Yes, you are GPT, that's the point of, of this tutorial to choose UFI. All right, we have uh, some free space, 25 gigabytes normally, right? And we're going for a new. So you can navigate with this arrows and with an enter you can create something. 25 gigabyte for a boot would be a little bit too much. So 550 MB or 500 really doesn't matter as this is big enough for a particular um, UFI system. So I need to tell them what it is. And my friend, you are an EFI system. Okay, now he knows. Let's check. We get the same image, so I'm really, really comparing these two guys. That will result in this layout. So you really can follow step by step. Shouldn't be too difficult if you follow the video. And then they create a swap partition. Okay, fine. You go one down because that's a free space. The swap, you decide to either install it or not install it. It's entirely up to you. But uh, most of us probably will install it. Let's say, how about five gigabytes out of 25, like so. So that worked as well. So GB or G works. As type, we're going to look for the swap, Linux swap, there he is. And then the rest is going to be our root. Let's see if I did everything correct. So I'm scrolling to the text here. We'll stick to three partitions. And we go to the free. And we say Linux file system. And we should get this. Okay. So new. The rest is for my file system. So we compare what we have, what they have. By the way, um, check in, in the third line, there's label GPT. If you were following a tutorial and you see that you, you wanted an MBR and you have this GPT there, then it means you're, you're doing it wrong, right? So a bias or an, a DOS partition that's okay, or GPT or EFI, that's okay, but um, that should be correct. I'm comparing, everything seems okay. And then we're gonna save, 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 save. We need to move this to the right here. Okay, are you sure you want to write it? Yes, I would like to save it. So it's written, but you need to get out of the application. So quit. All right. 
typing ls list my block devices gives us this. Let's have a look. So I have SDA1, SDA2, SDA3. Okay, still doesn't know really what it is, but let's help him a little bit. We need to format everything. We're scrolling down. Let's make a file system. And it should be fat. 32. And our first one is SDA1. That's a small one to boot from. And then we are going to make the swap. Okay. And following strict the tutorial, so we check everything if it's okay. It's created, but it's not on. So I'm gonna say swap on device SDA2. Now the home partition, well, well the root partition actually, is not yet available, it's not yet formatted. So let's make the file system for it as well. Make file system, an extension for is probably what most people use. There are lots of things, what am I doing? Why is this slash? I was typing wrong, my fingers were wrong. Device SDA3, correct? Correct. So there you are. This looks a little bit different now. He knows that's a swap, that's good. And then we're going to mount the file systems. Okay. Let's mount device SDA3 inside the folder MNT. It's already available on the ISO. So it's this, this should not be created, it's there. And then make directory then this should be created inside mount we're going to make a folder called boot okay make directory boot in mount and then we're going to mount it the sda1 so that's the where the, the place where we boot from and we're going to say you go inside boot so you can actually mount a complete partition inside a folder that's so Linux like okay just remember that so there is a specific partition in that folder boot and then installation that's where we are select the mirrors that's the next thing let's see at our um, at our page here so we've done our formatting and make swap, swap on, we've mounted it. And um, that's for later, select the mirrors. Mirror server, we are at that, and then later backstrap and configure the system and shroot. Okay, still looking good, still looking the same. So we are now at the title, select the mirrors. Fine, let's select the mirrors. It's because this ISO is created at some part in the world, but who knows where it ends up. So we are going to tell the system the closest link for me is probably not Turkey. I'm from Belgium, by the way. France would be normally okay. Sweden server, don't want to type too much. There is a Belgian one, I see. Why not take the Belgian one? It does not mean that we are fast. Just want to try it. So I'm using the server mirror ADCT, etc. Control X, save modified. Yes, please. All right, file name, file name to write. Okay, correct. I press enter, saved. Sure, sure. It's saved. Control X, done. So that's that. We are telling the system that's the server we want to use for all the updates. And now we're going to start getting the important stuff in. So the actual Arch Linux installation. Inside this, well, this um, folder, it's a folder mount, but it's also a partition. We've mounted a partition inside the folder. So on that partition, which is going to be our system really, we are going to install base and base for development. 
and off they go. Download speed is okay. Fine. Good server. Configure the system is next. FS tab generates what we've created. So we've divided our hard disk into pieces and the system Linux must know what pieces are where and what's their name. That's a long complicated user, I don't know, user ID or something, UUID. It's probably not, has nothing to do with the user, but maybe we'll see it later. But a UUID needs to come in there. I guess we have a Linux kernel in. It has to wait to reboot, I mean, a bit. Not the time. Okay, and then they say generate me the file system. Oops, wrong window. And generate the file system tab. Okay, minus u inside mount. And you know what? Write it to a file. And the particular file is going to be the most important file in regards to your hard disks. This one. So basically, if you want to see what happens now, of what happened now, and just to check if everything is okay, then we are going to open that. And everything looks good. And this is what I mean with the UUID. Let's have a look. What is a UUID definition? Universally unique identifier. Okay, so that's it in Dutch. Is an idee die wordt gebruikt in de software architectuur gestandardiseerd door de Open Software Foundation als onderdeel van het distributed computing environment. Quite clear indeed. Okay, so it's a unique identifier, basically. More, less is more, right? You don't need to know more, anything more. Control X, getting out of here. I have my FS tab, it's checked. Then I should cheroot inside my system. And that's called here, arch shroot. I've made tutorials about this particular thing because basically Arch Linux is always fixable. And that's with this command, there's a tutorial about it. So if it breaks, if, if you install wrong NVIDIA drivers, I believe I've done that exercise, computer breaks, okay? And then you can shroot inside it and uh, fix it and well, uninstall whatever you did or undo whatever you did and then again boot up. So that's a super powerful thing. We need it here as well because we need to actually become a user, become a root person inside this particular uh, partition, this folder and everything changes. It's not root in red anymore. We have now moved inside the folder inside our future partition and we're gonna work in there. There's lots of stuff already in there. The basics is already in there. The beginning of an entire, entire uh, uh, operating system. Okay. Then I'm uh, at the time zone, it seems. That's the next thing. Following, okay, following the wiki. That's indeed the next thing, the time zone. So I'm going to make a link to a particular place, user, share, zone info. And then what can I choose? I can choose that one. Lots of folders actually. And I'm going to choose Europe, Brussels, and then the link etc local time so my local time is gonna be europe brussels enter that's one thing we should do then the hardware clock is next up and it's something we definitely can't remember sisto hc that's correct okay done 
and then we're off to the locale. So it's still the same. Yep, localization is now next up. Locale generation. We're going to check out nano etc locale gen. And you just go down with your arrows and in page down is faster for me because I'm looking for English US. Here you are. You just need the UTF-8, that's it. So use your own locale that you like and love and then say yes to save it. If that's done, we're gonna generate it. So locale gen as a command then is going to find out what element you, uh, which, which hashtag you deleted and is going to create the locales. Then some other stuff we need to do, etc locale.conf. That's the file we're going to make and inside it, we're going to say language equals en underscore. So the same as the one you selected, of course utf-8 control x yes saved uh -huh. okay we're still following the wiki then they're going to the v console that's indeed next up okay fine so nano oops that's something else nano etc v console v -console console.conf correct vconsole.com and then um, key map in my case is needs to be azerty so be latin one is good for me okay control x yes save and there are some shorter alternatives in the on my uh, page here articlingsd.com Hostname, hostname, okay, nano etc hostname. Let's type exactly the same thing that I've typed, and that's Arch Linux with a big arch. So, arch, oops, wrong page, Arch Linux, like so. I seem to have typed different things. I think it was in the video, it was different. And then we go to the next. And the next is to nano etc hosts. There's a little bit of typing here. So 127.01, tap local host, and then one, tap, tap local host and again so this is the local host number this is you and an arch linux the same name as you applied earlier on and again the same name you've chosen for your computer so that's the name of the computer simple as that yes network configuration yep from here, we're starting to be different. So we've done this one, the host name, and this is not required. So we've skipped this as well. But what isn't here is it is the, the network. It's a, it has something about network, but it says complete a network configuration, okay? That's it, complete the network configuration if to go to another page. Well, basically, that's what we're gonna do. We're going to say pacman minus s get me the application network manager. He's to go, he's going to be my system, my application to get to the internet, to the wireless, to have a an, um, VPN, etc. But I do need to remember to enable it. So next time I boot up, it needs to have a particular file. It has to find the file, so it's going to start up. So system CTL enable, and you need to type exactly the what I type. 
with all capitals and all that. And then you get these three lines. If you see, if you see the three lines, then it's okay. So we have in our system are now three links to a particular place user lib system D. Without these links, no internet. Okay, that's done. Initram MS is not necessary anymore, so we've done, we've skipped that as well. And then we're going to set a password for root. So password, that's my password, that's my password, done. Let's have a look at the wiki. Okay, that's it. Root loader, that's something we should do as well. And they point you in a direction of a page. Arch boot process bootloader. And if you have Intel or AMD CPU, enable microcode updates. Okay. Pacman minus S. We need grub. We need it also, since this is not an MBR thing, but an UFI thing, we need it. This guy, boot. Okay, no typos, grub. Uh -huh. Okay. Installation is almost done. Then we need to get the grub installed. So grub install, what's the target? Equals 86 underscore 64 dash EFI. Everything should be correct. So that's why I move a little bit slower, just to be certain that I do not make any typos. Okay. Okay, I think it's it. Let's try. No error reported. We do like to see messages like that. No error reported. Okay, you can recheck as an extra check. We're not gonna do that. We have grub make config then. And where should we make it? The output file should be boot grub grub.cfg. And that's done also. So grub is installed, configured and everything. And then comes the fix for VirtualBox. We only need to do this fix if we are on VirtualBox. You can reboot with VirtualBox and end up in the grub, but you cannot shut down. You will end up in a boot screen from the ISO. We need to copy and rename a specific file to solve the issue. Fine, let's go for it. Make directory. You have to make this one and then and then we have the EFI and we do not have a boot folder yet. So I'm gonna make a boot folder. I'm gonna copy paste over the boot EFI arch. Oops, there are some typos here. So boot EFI arch. This guy needs to go over to boot e oh no no spaces boot and it should give, get another name. It should not just be copy pasted. It should be called differently like this. Let's see. Okay, no typos. That's that. Let's try it out, reboot. So rebooting is not that, uh, well, not a pseudo reboot thing, but it's an exit thing because we are shrouded. We are getting out of this arch route. And now we can unmount everything and it will give us some errors, but it doesn't matter, unmount everything. Too busy and all that, fine. And now you can reboot. This is your group. We were successfully, we had, uh, we have a successfully installed grub. And we end up, of course, in a beautiful system where you can only become root and have the password for root because that's it. This is just what we've done. And basically we're at the end of the page and the only thing we can do now, well, we can go to the next step. But what I'm gonna do first is control F here Control F, 
I shut this thing down. Power off. Okay, done. This is phase one. Clone. Now we're going going ahead with this phase. What we have, what we've done yet, done till yet, right? And we're going to go to phase two. This is the next page. So I'm clicking on this thing. So we have here, we've done everything. Reboot after shutdown and all that. We fixed everything. Up. Next step. That's what we're going to press. And we're going to do all these things right now. Okay, moving that guy back to its place. Scrolling up. It's cloned in the meantime. Well, this clone is not a nice name. So this is just phase two. Or page two. Double click. Make it bigger. Okay, stop. Power off. Get rid of this uh, ISO in here so that the optical drive is empty. Then boot up, control F, so we don't see it. We just want to go to our hard disk, see the grub. And we're back. Phase two. Phase two is, well, actually not in here. So here it kind of stops the arch wiki and then there is the general recommendations and the list of applications but then you're well pretty much on your own so i went to look for other tutorials and videos and i made my way into what i should do next basically so i'm actually relying now on on my own article and that's then this one this version number page number six here Actual installation of Arch Linux phase two. This is by the way the page for BIOS and UFI. So here it stops. Here's no there's no difference anymore between MBR and UFI. Reboot select done. Needs login. Internet is activated. Yes, we can test, but it will be okay. Then there's a topic about the AOR helpers. We've moved this to a later stage when you're uh, graphical, much more interesting. Multi-lib repository, that's something you can do. Um, if you want to actually uh, use that, you can skip that also and do that later when you're graphical. But let's have some fun here, etc pacman.conf and move down. What we're talking about is the, the multi-lib. So there's another library out there let's say a repo and this repo has oops control x yes has um, files like i don't know like steam and skype and stuff like that other applications that you cannot have without this multi-lib thing and then what else check out articlelinkspacman.conf mm -hmm, done that oh yeah sure we can do that so sudo well i'm not i am sudo already pacman minus sy and you get this we have now a new line multilib new repo i do like my bash completion so pacman minus s bash completion otherwise i have to type the complete word and now the bash completion with a tab is going to auto complete it if it can then we're going to make a personal account. So we can't stay root forever. We need a personal account. User at minus M minus G users minus the group and the lots of groups and video. And there is network and this wheel and there is storage. No typos allowed, Eric. Minus S. What shell are you going to choose? I'm going to choose for bash. There is ZSH as well. And my name is Eric. So the user is Eric. I'm going to give Eric a password. A very difficult one. Probably have seen it already. And then we are going to make sure that Eric can do something. Editor equals nano sudo. Strange file, but an important one where you say that wheel is all all. Where are you? Wheel is all all. That's this guy, I believe. Yeah, that's the one. 
Ctrl X, yes, and saved. So we give the uncomment to allow members of group will to execute any command. So we can execute uh, anything with sudo. Then we log out, he says, exit. So log back in with your personal account. Okay, and there you are. Now I have to type sudo pacman. Let's do it. Pacman minus sy. It's not possible. So we need to be sudo. And since my last change here, it's now possible to update the system with sudo. Okay, next step, they say, basically, well, let's shut down properly for once. Sudo shut down now. This was phase two. Clone. Three. Next, clone. So in phase three, double click. We are here. Phase two, next step. We're going to phase three. We need to install a graphical interface. We need to see something, right? We can't keep staying in this TTY kind of look. We need a XORG, etc., etc. So I'm gonna follow this thing. Okay. All right. So this time I'm gonna do everything like Eric, not as root. And I'm gonna say sudo pacman me xorg server install me that there's xorg apps which is a group I'm gonna install lots of stuff Tinit and xter there we go lots of stuff it is indeed a group package now i don't have an nvidia i don't have require an nvidia 340 so that's maybe something at this point in time you might want to try out so if number one was not unsuccessful, then maybe you need number two, basically. But the default is one. I'm assuming you can still change it later on, but on a virtual box, it really doesn't really matter. So in that case, just press default or one. When we start, start X and so we're not gonna do that. Graphics driver. So we do not have to look out for a driver for an NVIDIA or Intel AMD or anything, but there is a tutorial here online I see. And then the next thing we like, like to do is have something that greets us and, and login manager, display manager. So we choose LightM in our systems. We have other possibilities, but sudo pacman minus s LightM has served as well over the years sudo pacman minus s and there's more there are more stuff so lightm gtk greeter let's take the standard one we've changed already these guys to arco linux kind of presentation but let's stay still stay arch and not arco yeah so you see how it looks we can always add spices of Arco Linux later. And then most importantly, if you don't activate it, you know it won't do anything. So enable it. Enable lightdm.service. And there, you get this link. Without this link, no fun. Then they put in real big capitals. Do not reboot until you have a desktop environment. Do not forget to enable lightdm. Another so two things that I forgot in the past that I've learned from. And then we have this, this um, choice. So these were the messages here, do not reboot, etc. Choose your desktop. So we're missing Qtile at this point in time. So we have other things like Xmonad or PSPWM, other tiling window managers, maybe to, to take a look at right now. But the thing is Qtile, we need to figure out Maybe a good idea, but I've already visited, of course, the ArchWiki Qtile. And it really is a small wiki. That's it. Right, so 
the information in here is is pretty scarce and there is something we can do there is a configuration file pi um, so a um, python file config pi where you can um, well start with but you know the drill with in general window tiling managers what you get is very very um, spartan let's say it like that spartan yeah basically we could follow this thing let's give it a try and see what happens we make a directory fine and it's gonna be inside config and then qtile let's see what we get i'm following the wiki in user share the developers have put a file that we can use to start with if it's available user share Qtile. okay maybe eric you should run well not run but install Qtile first so otherwise we won't have a file <laughs> Which one first, right? The egg or the chicken? So, whoa, space. We need to install Qtile first. So, have a look what it brings. A lot of Python stuff. And then the Qtile itself. Fine. Now, back to this thing here. So, no, not that one, but the other copy that we need to make. So, the wiki says copy paste the user share doc. And now the Qtile is there. Hooray. Qtile there it says. Default config, check, we got it. And we're going to put it inside config Qtile config, yeah, dot pi. Checking. No typos, okay, enter. So that's basically what they say and then they say okay this is what I've done these two lines forgot to install Qtile install Qtile means sudo pacman minus s Qtile and that's it before restarting you can test your know, index or use the command okay but no not okay so sudo reboot what will happen is that lightdm is there so grub of course and then lightdm is gonna ask hey who are you it's an ugly look it's the normal look right this is what it looks like you have here arch linux you can click here large font high contrast you can't use those guys we've got rid of this but maybe we'll get back in i don't know anyway i'm eric and I'm logging in and this is what we get so is this Spartan enough for you I do see some letters in here I really must reach and, and look very close to see something uh, this is, seems an F and a D and a U so there are workspaces in here that I can click this is the default config um, alt I don't know super I did something here that's super return so I got something working getting rid of it that was a super Q but I think it's still there so super Q does something else so it's the general config of the guys from uh, Qtile so this is again a system where we feel like it's better now to get our spices in to get Arco Linux stuff in because well basically it's it's so minimal it's so oh yeah my keyboard is again off so if we would have a look I want to have a look at this thing that we have now and then uh, this guy so this is what is given by Aldo and Randall and Craig and Tao. So the copyright guys at the top. And you should read the keyboard shortcuts and figure out 
what to do and change all that. That's it. Okay, so one screen, two screens, maybe three screens, a lot of the top there is a lot of um, copyright text. So two screens of code and that's your Q tile. All right, fine, let's get our Q tile. We are, where are we actually? Present worker directory, okay, we're at my home, fine. So I'm gonna make it a little bit, uh, make it clean already. I'm gonna get my Arc Linux D scripts. So, Arco Linux D scripts. I'm gonna go inside it, and in here I'm gonna git clone Oops. And then Arcolinks D, since we're talking about the D version, Arco Q tile. Git command not found. Sure you have it in a bit. There you go. Now you have it. Arrow up and git clone it. And here we are. So if you've seen the videos of Arc Linux and how to install any of the 13 desktops, it's basically always the same thing. Run the numbers. Four cores, that's correct. It's a virtual box, 50-50. The display manager, already done, but maybe there is more. Let's have a look. So sudo pacman syiu means update, lightm done. And there's the Arco Linux LightDM GTK greeter. So we actually use already the Arco touch, Arco design. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna keep it ugly like it is. And we have Qtile, so we have it. LightDM is installed and set default graphical target. Okay, so we don't need to run this. But we need to run maybe some other stuff. Let's skip some stuff because of the, the video is going to be too long otherwise. Sounds not important for the moment. 110 Bluetooth is not important for the moment. 130 printers, Samba, not important. 150, not important. You can run all of those later. 200, mm, it's gonna be Firefox and GIMP and Inkscape and all that software thing. Software AUR, mm, let's skip that as well, 300. But when it says di repo distro specific, then it means, and then it's an application that it's needed for the distro. Let's do install number 400 here, but I suppose we'll have a problem. Let's see. Oh, one moment. All right, so. 400 ran and you can always rerun it. You'll see that it's just going to skip. That's the way how the scripts were made. And 500 seems also interesting and important because it says software AOR repo distro specific. So specific for this, well, desktop. Let's try this out. And we see here that he try to install something and it says no it's not installed has not been installed has not been installed the thing is it's using yay or trizen one of the aor helpers to um, install it and let's take a look at the website let's move the website page over here so phase five install an aor helper and there's lots of um, text and, and video but basically we're missing yay or trizen, either of both, one of both you need to install. And it's in here, of course. It is, this is yay. If you Google AOR and then arch and then yay, probably AOR yay is enough. And you'll find this um, link. And in this link, we get to see the package build. We can build the package on base of this recipe because basically that's what it is. It says, get me this build that and package it like this. Done. So let's do this. So let's follow this guide and build here. Yay, because it's actually requiring 
this yay thing and then Arch Linux it's already installed but this is not Arch Linux this is Arch and Arch well they say I believe let's have a look if I can still find it somewhere uh, up here welcome to AOR please read some blah, blah, more information must conform blah 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 Disclaimer, AUR packages are user product content. Any use of provided files is at your own risk. So they really say that's not really Arch. It's user, well, Article Linux user content. All right, let's um, get it in anyway, because we trust Yay. So we are going to follow the tutorial, which is now again gone. We're going to wget. Do we have the application wget? Not found. sudo pacman minus s wget. Yes. Do we have curl installed? Curl is installed by standard. Okay, fine. So good that we know. Let's um, wget this thing. And it's https double point slash slash aor dot arch linux dot org slash cjit aor git plain package build you can also download the tar gz but hey let's follow the tutorials let's see if this works error not found what type of did I do? Nothing. So let's compare the plain one. So I'm comparing, let's go back. I'm comparing this thing. You have here a button that says plain this guy needs to be the same as the other one. And CGT plane looks okay. So what did I do wrong? Let's pause the video a little bit. All right, there's the typo. It says here, it says here, out git. It should be a war, of course, git. All right, unless do we have something? We have a package built and it's written to something very stupid. It has the stupidest name ever. So that was not a good idea. If we type man wget, we should see some command to say, here it is in the middle, a big O capital O file, output document file. So let's tell him to do exactly the same thing, but minus o and then package build that's what it's supposed to be called be named ls now i do have a package build and i can remove the other one if that is even possible so that guy with a question mark that's out and we only have one guy, package build. So no, no, package build. This is straight from the internet. This is the recipe. This is what I need. The only thing I need to do is make the package. And then we have yay. If this thing is too slow, kill it, do it again. It's coming from the net, so the connection is going to, I don't know what kind of server, but it's done already now. And we have a yay bin tar.xz in the end here, there, means that you do sudo pacman minus u. You're going to install something that you made. So that's how you can remember it. So bin and then go install it. Done. Yay is installed. That's because there is no yay on Arch Linux. That's why we need to do this here. 
When you go back up and 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 back up. We are at number 500. And now this time the script say use yay to install stuff. And yay exists. So it's going to install everything. All right, that's solved as well. Okay, LS. So the last thing was 500. 600 is a conditio sine qua non. I mean, you always install the stuff from Arch Linux repo. If you want to have the Qtile um, elements, for sure. Now, if you want to be picky, let's be a little bit picky. Pseudo Pacman minus S. Oh yeah, let's try this. It's not going to work at all. Target not found. Arch Linux doesn't know the Arco repository, so this thing this is number 600 is never gonna work. 700 is gonna work, so we can do that already. Some fonts that is going are going to be installed. That's great. Let's keep on installing until we need to figure out this number 600. What else? 800 if you want to auto login. Let's keep that for out of the loop for now. 900 is our microcode, so the Intel microcode in this case. So if you have an AMD, you should run or install the AMD U code. And the fixed mouse cursor is not a point at this point and is not important right now. So if you're on phase five, Archway is the way to install it, right? There is a folder in here that says, has the name CD Archway. If you want to install the Arco Linux stuff, like I just wanted to install number 600, you need to do something. And it all depends if you need to run number 10. I know I need to run those because of my uh, internet service provider here. And But you just check out if you need to do it. If you see errors, then, then you know you need to run 10. So this is the key from Arco Linux. That's going to be added, but not only the key from Arc Linux, but all keys are going to be retrieved and fetched from the internet. So yes, internet is needed. Refreshing 114 keys and so on and so on. You may think at this point in time, that sometimes it happens that the response time is oh so very long. So that you think, hey, it's going to, to crash, it's going to, it's going nowhere. Just let it be. And it will get to you. All the information needs to come from the net. And these are the people, Pierre Smiths and so on, all people who have signed packages. So the signatures of all these people are being installed. 771 I see there. Ah, yeah, not checked you to missing keys. That's something else. Jan de Groot I see. That's uh, one of the developers of Calamaris. So, a lot of people, we need them all. And finally, we're going to get also the Arch Linux stuff. So these keys are trusted. So that was number 20. Then, if you want to install stuff from Arch Linux, well, let's have a look. Then you see that there is nothing in here. There is no Arch Linux anywhere. This is the genuine thing. This is the Arch Linux thing. The Pacman would come from them. Basically, no Arco. What if I type 30 at Arch Linux repo to pacman.conf? Then we have Arch Linux repos added. You see already the lines repo, repo third party, repo submicron. And if we reopen it, go back down, you see all the repos in here for Arch Linux. So easy. And then 40 install software Arch Linux uses in bash or C. Yep, that's true. We've made that as well. So sometimes we use elements in our bash or C, like the reflector or, or X pack and stuff like that. So if, if we import an alias, 
and the hardware or well the software is not there of course the alias won't work so that's why we made this little application to make sure that these software packages are installed and then 50 create auto login group to be able to auto login okay if you want to auto login later on creating a group doesn't cost you anything it's now created now you can run script 800 to the auto login but let's skip that thing now i was going to say we can install so cd ls we are back in arco q tile we can install the big bunch this is the big bunch this is all the Arch Linux packages the one with a and a hashtag in front of it will not be installed, but all the rest will be installed. So we could be a little bit more selective about it and get the Qtile stuff only and see what happens. So the sudo pacman arc linux Qtile git, surely we need this one. And let's have a look. sudo pacman minus s q tile that's already done arc linux q tile is what we have not done so this guy he's going to install stuff in etc scale and etc scale needs to be copy pasted but guess what scale command not found so the bash rc is not here our bash rc with our aliases is not here so we need to copy paste our Qtile configuration from A to B, okay? So we're gonna copy paste the um, etc scale config minus R. So recursively everything that's in here copy paste that to my home folder inside.config how about that let's see if that works so I'm wondering so let's have a look so the cd2.config no such file unless where are we okay cd starting from the home directory go to the config and let's have a look so we have qtile there cd qtile ls config pi it was unsuccessful so let's do that again copy paste everything that's in here to the dot config there is a wall gpg there's a scripts now it's okay so with the asterisk everything that's in there we're gonna copy paste it over now it's time well a good time to just see and what happens still wondering what stuff i miss but we'll see and learn now this happens to us as well so whether you're on Arch Linux and Arch Linux doesn't really matter so this light DM probably we're, we're not sure if it's light DM or not but it gives us this stop job uh, it's running for um, well for light display manager or session 2 the message is sometimes a little bit different but basically we're stuck with 90 seconds there are tutorials online how to fix it make it a little bit smaller there's also the nemesis script that we are trying to find a solution that sometimes seems to work and sometimes it doesn't. Um, basically, uh, we can drop it down to 10 seconds or something, or if everything works fine, just one, two seconds, like all days. But we're on a, on a virtual machine, so control 